हेलो एवरीबॉडी स्टार्टेड ओके हेलो एवरीबॉडी लेट अस टुडे स्टडी ए न्यू चैप्टर दैट इज फूड लिपिड्स एंड इन दिस पार्ट ऑफ द लेक्चर ऑन फूड लिपिड्स वी विल मेनली फोकस ऑन द नेचर and occurrence of lipids in various biological materials lipids are heterogeneous group of naturally occurring substances which are insoluble in water but soluble in organic solvents such as chloroform ether benzene hexane etc they contain hydrocarbon groups as primary parts of the molecule and are present in are derived from living organisms maybe either from plant source or from animal source the compound classes of lipids which are covered in this definition include fatty acids acyl glycerols fatty acid esters and isopropyl hydrocarbons before we come to the nature of the lipids let us see the what are the various functions which lipids perform these lipids are stored in adipose tissues in the form of triglycerides and they are one of the major source of energy to the cell some lipids are essential nutrients like fat soluble vitamins they also are the constituents of biological membrane they are very important to the structure and function of the biological membranes they act as receptors antigens and membrane anchors of proteins they facilitate the digestive process they act as electrical insulator of axon of neurons and more importantly they improve texture flavor and palatability of foods the lipids are constitutes of Uh, fat, fatty acids so the fatty acids are characterized by a long chain of carbon atoms generally 12 to 22 carbons ending in a carboxyl functionality the there might be different substitutions or variations in the chain structure and which these labels of substitutions and variations may result into different types of fatty acids including saturated fatty acids unsaturated fatty acids branched chain fatty acids or oxygenated fatty acids plant lipids occur in leaves stems flowers fruits pollen grains and but the largest concentration of the lipid in plants is found in seeds they are found in plant cells as a very small droplet or globule which are dispersed in the protoplasm plant lipids act as a storehouse of metabolic energy and their important functions in the plant include protection against dehydration and pathogens carrying of electrons absorption of light and contribution to the structure of membrane the commonly lip found lipids in plant systems include saturated fatty acids like palmitic acids monounsaturated fatty acids like oleic acid and polyunsaturated fatty acids such as linoleic and linolenic acids plant contain comparatively 
less saturated fatty acids like uh, lauric and myristic acids. Plant oils are mixture of mixed triglycerides. In this slide, I have tried to give you a general differentiation between the plant lipids and animal lipids. The examples of animal lipids are animal fat, uh, maybe butter fat, lard, etcetera. Plant lipids examples may be coconut, olive, or sunflower oil, etcetera, are the oil derived by uh, derived from different oil seeds. Animal fats are relatively rich in solid fatty acids or saturated fatty acids, whereas plant fats are comparatively rich in unsaturated fatty acids. And because of this variation in the saturated and unsaturated fatty acids in the plant lipids and animal lipids, plant lipids are mainly liquid at room temperature, whereas animal lipids are solid at room, tem room temperature. Animal fats have less iodine value, plant fats have comparatively high iodine value. Animal fats have higher Rm value or Rm number, plant fats have relatively lower Rm number. Regarding the rancidity in the animal fat, hydrolytic rancidity is major problem, whereas in the plant fat, it is the oxidative rancidity because of the unsaturation of fatty acids. So, oxidative rancidity is more of a problem in the plant oil or fats. Animal fats are generally stored in liver or beneath the skin. The plant fats are stored in fruits and seeds and the cells in which animal fats are stored, they are called adipocytes, whereas in the plant cell system, the plant fats are normally stored as granules or oil droplets. So, after having this uh, description about uh, plant and animal lipids, let us try to understand actually what are uh, fats and oils. In fact, these fats and oils basically they are one form of lipids. They are triglycerides that are solid at room temperature or maybe liquid at room temperature. So, the fats which are, are lipids which are solid at room temperature are generally termed as fat. They are usually derived from animals and they contain mostly saturated fatty acids. Whereas, the oils are the triglycerides that are mostly liquid at room temperature. They are usually derived from plants and they have more amount of unsaturated fatty acids. So, basically chemically both of them are triglycerides and it is the as I told you it is the basic difference of the fatty acids which are present in them and nature of the fatty acid chain of the fatty acid length or degree of saturation of the fatty acids which makes them solid or which makes them liquid. So, let us see what are the saturated fatty acids, what are the unsaturated fatty acids, polyunsaturated fatty acids etcetera. As far as the saturated fatty acids are concerned, they contain only single bond between carbon atoms. They fit to the general formula C n H 2 n O 2. Food lipids, solid fatty acids or food lipids saturated fatty acids possess in general an even number of carbon atoms odd numbered fatty acids are produced by certain bacteria and are considered as markers of the bacterial growth. As far as the monoin or monosaturated fatty acids are concerned, like you can take the clue from term mono, unsaturated. Unsaturation means 
the all the carbon balances are not saturated there is some double bond existing so the mono unsaturated means one double bond so fatty acids they contain one double bond between adjacent carbon atoms and they fit to the generally general formula of cn s2n minus 2 o2 the double bonds in mono unsaturated fatty acids is generally at a number of locations along the carbon chain resulting mono in isomers may be like for example 16 one uh, n9 and 16 one n11 all double bonds in fatty acids are generally of cis geometry in this unsaturated fatty acids the double bonds in general in the natural fat they contain cis geometry however when these fats are exposed to heat treatment such as in the operations like cooking frying etc then cis is converted into trans the cis geometry means that is the in the double bond position oh groups are at the same side of the chain whereas in the trans geometry they are located on the opposite side of the chain so that is and the cis and trans fats their composition it uh, of uh, nutritional significance and importance in food science polyunsaturated fatty acids contain more than one double bond poly that is 2 3 4 5 are more double bond in the carbon chain polyunsaturated fatty acids are which are commonly called as pufa from all natural sense uh, sources as i told you like mufa this pufa also natural pufa they contain fatty acids are double bonding in cis geometry majority of natural pufa contain double bond in a methylene interrupted pattern the maximum number of double bond possible in a pufa is limited by the chain length and position of the first double bond from the carboxyl atom maximum number of double bonds in naturally occurring polyunsaturated fatty acids are four for c18 carbon containing fatty acids five for c20 carbon containing fatty acids and six for c22 carbon containing so most of the food fats or food fats and oils are oils they generally contain ranging from 1 to 6 double bonds so polyunsaturated fatty acids obviously those contain higher amount like uh, that is 4 5 6 <laughs> double bonds in their structure another important uh, fatty acids is the branched chain fatty acid however they are normally not found in food materials they are of two types like methyl group replaces hydrogen atom of the carbon chain in one group of the branched chain fatty acids in another group it is the isopropanoid acids and you can see here in this figure that is isopropanoid acids are normally derived from isoprene units then next category comes oxygenated fatty acids they most commonly occur as a hydroxyl or keto group they are produced from the partial oxidation of unsaturated fatty acids during cooking or heating processes and therefore they become of uh, nutritional significant or sometimes significance or sometimes of concern in food science and food processing hydroxy fatty acids occur in both saturated and unsaturated forms with various positional isomers there are three major types of uh, oxygenated fatty acids are hydroxy fatty acid they are two hydroxy or alpha hydroxy fatty acids where the even numbered chains from c10 to c26 and the components of animal tissues are there three hydroxy or beta hydroxy fatty acids 
exist as series of even number chains or even numbered acids from C 10 to C 18 and they are components of many bacteria and yeasts. Third category is where the hydroxyl group may be present at the penultimate carbon from the carboxyl group of chain series C 11 to C 19. Ketone functional group occur as 2 keto, 3 keto or omega 1 keto acids. Then after having studied that fatty acids, let us now study glycerol, acyl glycerol or glycerides which are more commonly known as. So, the acyl glycerols or glycerides consist of 1, 2 or 3 fatty acids residues esterified to hydroxyl residue of a glycerol molecule. You can see here in the figure this is a glycerol molecule, it has 3 hydroxyl group. So, this glycerol reacts with the fatty acids, fatty acids has RCOOH right. So, that is a, the there is ester linkage is formed between the hydroxyl group as well as carboxyl group of the glycerol and fatty acids and the resulting compound depending upon whether there is one fatty acid is reacting with one group or two fatty acids or three fatty acids are accordingly that glyceride, monoglyceride, diglycerides or triglycerides are formed. So, in this case it is one fatty acid is uh, esterified with alcohol linkage of the glycerol molecule. Okay. So, in fact, in other words, you can say that it is form monoglycerides are formed by substitution of glycerol backbone by acyl residues in which substitutions are along with the fatty acids carbon chain. So, if it is the one substitution, it is monoglyceride, two substitutions, diglyceride, and if all the three hydroxyl group are substituted by fatty acids are esterified with fatty acids, then it becomes triglycerides. So, monoglyceride I already explained and here you can see that in this uh, figure that is the uh, fatty acids may join at the S n 1 position, it may join at S n 2 position or at S n 3 positions and depending upon their position there may be 3 isomers or 3 positional isomers right like like SN1 isomer, SN2 isomer or SN3 isomers. SN2 isomer retains its molecular symmetry and is therefore non-chiral. The monoglyceride or monoacyl glycerols are very important group of uh, lipids which are generally used as emulsifier in food processing in preparation of different types of product. You can see here in this picture SN1, SN2 and SN3. Diacyl glycerides, there are two hydroxyl group of the glycerol molecule are esterified with two fatty acids. Diglyceryl contain two fatty acids therefore, again three isomers might be possible that is S n 1, S n 2, S n 1, S n 3, S n 2, S n 3 etcetera. So, on diglyceride also act as emulsifiers. Triglycerides are acyl glycerols, there is a full substitution that is all the three hydroxyl group of the glycerol molecule are esterified. So, three uh, fatty acids and it may so happen that is all the three uh, hydroxyl group are esterified with the same fatty acid that is three molecule of same fatty acid like stearic acid. So, stearic acid is uh, attached with all the three position S n 1, S n 2, S n 3 or it may be 
टू फैटी एसिड एस एन वन एस एन टू में भी स्टेरिक एसिड एस एन थ्री में भी पामिटिक एसिड आर ए कम्बिनेशन आर इन द ऑल द थ्री पोजिशन एस वन एस एन टू एस एन थ्री देर में बी थ्री डिफरेंट फैटी एसिड्स सो डिपेंडिंग अपॉन इफ एट ऑल द थ्री पोजिशंस देर आर सेम फैटी एसिड्स अटैच इट इज कॉल्ड सिंपल ट्राइग्लिसराइड एंड इफ द थ्री फैटी एसिड्स आर मिक्स डिफरेंट फैटी एसिड्स तो रिजल्टिंग ट्राइग्लिसराइड इज नोन एज मिक्सड ट्राइग्लिसराइड एंड मोस्ट ऑफ द फूड फैट्स एंड आयर्स आर मिक्सचर्स ऑफ मिक्सड ट्राइग्लिसराइड्स ट्राइग्लिसराइड्स फ्रॉम द प्लांट्स लाइक पाम कोकोनट एक्सेट्रा दे कंटेन कंपेरेटिवली हाई प्रपोर्सन ऑफ सेचुरेटेड फैटी एसिड्स and are solid at room temperature on the other hand the triglycerides from plant materials like corn peanut soybean sunflower oil etc or even olive oil they contain high proportion of unsaturated fatty acids or polyunsaturated fatty acids and they are liquid at room temperature phospholipids another important uh, category of lipids they are the derivatives of glycerophosphoric acid or more strictly sn glycerol 3 phosphate means in a triglyceride the fatty acid at sn 3 position which you can see here in this figure at sn 3 position this fatty acid is replaced with a phosphoric acid and the phosphoric acid in turn may be joined with another moiety like uh, it may be that is in the case of lecithin it may be that is the phosphatidyl choline phosphatidyl ethanol amine phosphatidyl serine phosphatidyl phenylalanine etc so accordingly these uh, phospholipids they are very important groups of Uh, lipids and they are commonly found in the food materials that is they contain both hydrophilic or polar regions the phosphate group and head group are the hydrophilic together with a hydrophobic or non polar region like the acyl residues and glycerol by and the glycerol backbone and accordingly they are very very structurally and then from the function wise they are very important in the food processing or food chemistry the other group of lipids are the waxes commonly called wax esters they are actually the esters of fatty acids and long chain alcohol generally mono hydroxy alcohol simple waxes are esters of medium chain fatty acid like 160 180 and 81.9 and long chain aliphatic alcohols like c8 to c18 complex wax waxes also exist where either the fatty acid or alcohol components have complex structures in their own right for example vitamins esters are esterol esters etc so you can see here in the picture that is the how the carnauba of wax its structure formula is shown waxes generally occur in bacteria and marine organisms okay and they are they serve as short term storage lipids or aid in their buoyancy simple waxes are found on surfaces of animals plants and insects and they prevent water loss compound with c21 to c44 have been reported from marine organisms fatty acids involved in the waxes may include polyunsaturated fatty acids although 161 and 21 are major components important in food as additives these waxes are b wax carnauba wax candelia wax and etc and they are used for several processes like even the earlier 
like the edible coating application and fruits etc these bags etc were used so they are used in food processing for different functions to perform different operations the another important category is terpenes they are lipids that are composed of two or more five carbon isoprene units they contribute to the flavor and aroma of many plant foods for example the citrus fruits the major aroma giving compounds are terpenes or terpenoids plant terpenes and terpenoids derivative includes phytal which is a constituent of chlorophyll beta carotene it is a photosynthetic pigment and a precursor of vitamin a in animals it they are also found in rubbers etc so gos mean that alba flavonone 2 methyl so bromenal bromel all these are the examples of uh, terpenes isoprenoid lipids are the major classes of compound such as terpenoids steroids carotenoids etc and the backbone structure from multiple repeating branched chain unsaturated c5 units they are called isoprene or isopentyl units and lipid can be identified by the ability to divide the compound structure neatly into its original isoprene synthetic units their subsequent cyclization and addition of functional groups may take place at sites of unsaturation the large diversity of complex nomenclature of isoprenoid is available there another important group of the lipids include steroids and sterols steroids are compounds of structure motive to of c30 terpenoid derived isoprenoid lipids they are derivatives of steroids and are common in eukaryotic cells natural occurring sterols have a 1 to cyclopentene phenyl 3 skeleton and 2730c atoms with a hydroxyl group at c3 and a side chain at least 7 carbon at c17 you can see here the formula of different steroids or sterols cholesterol another important group although it is uh, a sterol or but uh, it is found uh, associated with the phospholipids in food materials it is the main animal sterol it contain 27 carbon atoms arranged into four fused rings and a hydrocarbon tail it is the precursor of bile acids vitamin d and steroid hormones it is synthesized primarily in liver and adrenal gland cholesterol esters are hydrophobic and are few used for storage and transport of cholesterol and this cholesterol it has a very very important uh, functions to perform in our diet it is also synthesized in our uh, body but its intake many times need to be regulated because sometime in some individual excess of cholesterol if it is not uh, it is if it is consumed and not utilized in the body or get deposited in the body so it may create some problems phytosterols constitute another group of uh, lipids uh, having structurally related to cholesterol only difference which they have with the cholesterol is the in the structure of side chain phytosterol are of two types one is the sterol in which double bond is present in the sterol ring that is they are generally unsaturated compound other is the esterol which doesn't have any double bond so they are saturated compound the most common phytosterol and phytosterols are cetosterol and brassicasterol and phytosterols are isolated from vegetable oils another important components of 
lipids they tell you that is which are, which are of nutritional importance they are fat soluble vitamins that is vitamin a it is the most bioactive form of vitamin a is all trans retinol and cis forms created by a light induced isomerization alpha and beta carotene have bio potencies of about 8.7 percent and 16.7 percent of all trans retinol the daily value of uh, vitamin a is 1000 retinal, retinal equivalent animal liver is an excellent source of vitamin a and it helps in cure of night blindness vitamin d they are of two forms they are biologically active ergo calciferol it is vitamin d2 or cholecalciferol vitamin d3 they can be synthesized in human from 7 dehydrocholesterol which occurs naturally in the skin hormonal forms of the d vitamins are the hydroxylated derivatives vitamin d is converted to 25 ohd in kidney and further hydroxylated to a 125 di ohd in liver the dihydroxy form is most biologically active form in human you can see here the structure of 7 dehydrocholesterol how it is getting converted into pro vitamin d3 and vitamin d3 cholecalciferol vitamin e they are basically tocopherols that is tocopherols are tocotrienols they are also important uh, group of antioxidant they have good antioxidant activity tocotrienols have a conjugated trien double bond system in the phytyl side chain whereas tocopherols do not and that is the you can see in the structure depending upon that is the side chain that is either cs3 or h or other that is the alpha beta gamma and delta tocotrienols or tocopherols are found and their antioxidant properties differ significantly vitamin k1 for the phylloquinone or vitamin k2 for the minoquinone k1 is found in green leaves whereas k2 is synthesized in intestinal bacteria it is involved in blood clotting as an essential cofactor in the synthesis of gamma carboxyglutamate vitamin k deficiency is generally rare because of the varied microflora microflora present in the intestine this it is synthesized internally in sufficient quantity but this is a very very important vitamin so friends now we have a quite clear idea good understanding by now about the different uh, types of lipids how they are found in which form they are found and what are their importance in food processing food science and food engineering are in human nutrition even food products manufacturing so maybe in the next class we will take up the issues related to how they can be extracted at different methods for extraction of food fats and oils and their further processing thank you